Midway through Watches and Wonders, the Warren and Wound team took a day away from the show itself to get out into Geneva to check out some of the watch activity in what, at least for that week, was the horological capital of the world. Our day began at the FP Journe manufacturer in the heart of Geneva. The facility is surprisingly nondescript from the outside, but once indoors, it's clear how special it is. This is the building where most of FP Journe's watches are made and assembled by a team of master watchmakers, and also serves as a showroom and tribute to watchmaking itself. The lobby features a dramatic 10-foot-tall astronomical clock, and the walls are lined with books on watchmaking from Jorn's personal library. The floor-to-ceiling windows bathe the space in light, and it's a uniquely pleasant area to sit and admire much of Jorn's history. It was a real treat to be presented this year's novelties at the Jorn Manufacture. These watches are becoming harder and harder to see in person, so to have the chance to go hands-on with new automatiques, elegantes, and especially the new Vagabondage was a very special experience if you love watchmaking at any level. Urwerk is celebrating their 25th anniversary this year, and they invited us to their new base of operations in Geneva for a tour and to see some of their latest creations. Having Urwerk's co-founder and principal watchmaker Felix Baumgartner guide us through his personal collection of clocks and other horological oddities was one of the highlights of our week in Geneva. Urwerk's new location is in a building that's over 800 years old and is itself a dramatic contrast to their futuristic design language. From Urwerk, we crossed the Pont du Mont Blanc to check out the first ever AHCI grand exhibition of watch and clockmakers. The AHCI's focus is exclusively on independent horology, which means this event was filled with some of the most creative and exotic watches we saw while we were in town. It's an event that was considerably smaller in scale than Watches and Wonders, but it was no less impressive and included talented independent watch and clockmakers from around the world, including Bernard Lederer, Marco Long, and Vianney Halter. Our final stop for the day was Barton 7, a small temporary showroom set up in Geneva to showcase some smaller brands that we've had on our radar for quite some time. In a relaxed and easygoing environment, we were able to get hands-on with new watches from Singer Reimagined and Icopod and check out offerings from Schwartz Etienne, Genis, and others. It's hard to imagine a more watch-crazy place than Geneva during Watches and Wonders Week. This is just a small sampling of the horological activity happening throughout the city. Be sure to subscribe to Worn and Wound on YouTube for even more coverage of our time in Geneva and tons of other great content. <laughs>